Hi everyone, how are you doing? It's a lovely sunny day here in London and the shortlist for the International Booker Prize has just been announced. So I thought I'd make a quick reaction video giving my thoughts and feelings about the books that have been shortlisted because over the past month I've been reading quite a lot of the, the books that are on the long list of 13 books. And uh, I know a lot of people wait until the shortlist has been announced of a book prize before they try uh, reading some of the books for any given book prize. And uh, so these are the six books. Uh, the announcement was supposed to be made at a live event in London today, uh, which had to be cancelled and moved online for reasons which we are all far too aware of. Uh, everyone is in self-isolation at the moment. So the announcement was made online on the Booker Prizes channel. And uh, and it was interesting to, to watch that because the judges give all their uh, feelings and, uh, and thoughts about the, these books and why they think they're particularly extraordinary. So uh, I'll put a link down to, to that below. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting looking at this short list of six books because, uh, you know, when the, the 13 books, it was sort of European centric. Uh, a lot of the books were from European countries and only two books on this list are from European countries. Um, then you also have uh, The Enlightenment of the Green Gauge Tree um, from Iran and uh, The Memory Police from Japan and Hurricane Season from Mexico and then The, the Adventures of China Iron from Argentina. So it's quite a big like spread over the globe and actually the author of the enlightenment of the green gauge tree currently lives in Australia so you know everyone is sort of spread around and uh, and yeah and looking at the list in general it's interesting that three of the books are really based in the national history of the country and and sort of giving a new perspective on on the past of the country so the enlightenment of Green Gauge Tree, um, that, that's about the 1979 Islamic Revolution and, uh, and follows one family um, through that period. And this is the only book on the list that I, I haven't read yet and I'm really looking forward to it. I've heard such great things uh, about it and, uh, and actually uh, uh, Camel on his uh, YouTube channel, What Camel Reads, he did a whole uh, review video just about this novel. So I'll link that below because it's, it's really great. He, um, he gives a whole like context uh, around the novel and uh, as well as like a history of the, the author and obviously a review of the, the book itself. So, um, so yeah, I'd really recommend watching that. I'm really looking forward to, to reading this. It has such a, a beautiful cover. Um, then there's The Adventures of China Iron. And uh, this uh, has actually two translators, Fiona McIntosh and Iona McIntyre. And, uh, and this is such a great retelling of uh, Argentinian history. Um, so it, it plays upon from a famous poem of uh, about a, a gaucho at the end of the 1800s and the, the formation of modern Argentinian national identity, um, but looks at it through the perspective of a woman who is just only mentioned very briefly in that poem as, as the wife of this gaucho who is then discarded and after she um, has a, num a couple of children by him. And she's only a teenage, barely even a teenager herself in, in this novel um, when she goes on an exploration across the country uh, to find herself and discover a place where she can settle down and live in the, the country. And it's a very enjoyable novel, um, but I did have some slightly issues with the tone of it. And I talked about that a lot in my reading wrap up video recently about um, how, yeah, I felt like it became a bit too idealistic towards the end. But I was discussing this with Kamal actually, because he, he also made a video about um, this and he uh, and yeah and, and he made a very good point that uh, that you know it's the the whole tone of the novel is quite exaggerated and and uh, you know so it, it feels like it's taking place in this slightly fantastical uh, space and so yeah I can see that it does maintain that consistency of tone uh, throughout throughout the book and it, but yeah it is a very enjoyable read um, and yeah I just love the the new perspective um, it, it gave. And uh, then there is the novel Till, which yeah gives a new look at the, the Thirty Years' War and um, not just German history, but sort of uh, 
sort of Central European history and transformations um, taking place in the, the continent of, of that time. And um, it's a play off from a famous uh, a mythical figure um, called Till Ullenspiegel, um, who is a sort of trickster character. And, and it, it's part a biographical account about him and then part a bi almost biographical account of Elizabeth Stewart, who became famously known as the Winter Queen um, because uh, she and her husband only ruled over one winter period. And she's such a fascinating character. And uh, yeah, I just enjoyed this this narrative so much it's so uh plain playful as well as like quite dark and and sinister in some parts and and uh, and i love how it's it's sort of making fun of the these sort of pompous monarchs of of the time as well as like yeah giving an interesting perspective on the the population at the time which wasn't a, a good time to be living in europe because there was the the plague and there was a lot of religious warfare and uh, and uh, but but yeah it's and uh, and part of this um of the novel uh there's a, a strong scene that takes place in a, a witch trial uh, where um, Till's father is accused of being a warlock and uh, is held on trial for that. And yeah, um, so yeah, this is such a, a great novel. I'd really highly recommend it. And, and I should also note that this is uh, the, the only man on the list. Um, then there are also four female authors listed for the prize and, uh, and one author, uh, Marike Lucas Reginevald, um, is non-binary, I think. Um, I'm still not entirely clear, but at least in in uh, their biographical detail, they use the the pronouns they and them. So, uh, so yeah, there there's that. So yeah, highly recommend Till um, if you're looking for a good read. And then a novel I absolutely loved is Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melchor, uh, which is translated by, let me just remind myself. Oh yeah, Sophie Hughes. Um, yeah, who um, has translated a number of, of books uh, before. But yeah, so this is a look at a Mexican small town. And again, speaking about um, people being persecuted for uh, being, being a warlock, um, this uh, a woman is uh, sort of executed for being a local witch. And, um, and it looks at, not from her perspective, but a number of young people surrounding her and who were sort of somewhat involved or directly involved in her death. And, um, and so, yeah, it's looking at, uh, at, uh, at the events surrounding that particular incident, but also it's just a, a sort of broad look at um, this, this town, a very uh, misogynistic uh, dominated society of this small town in Mexico and uh, and has really dense breathless prose throughout it you can see uh, the text is made up of these big blocks of, of text and um, and it it's, uh, has a real propulsion to the narrative which is really gripping and and just completely absorbed me though I should give the warning that it's a very dark subject matter a lot of really brutal violent uh, both physically violent and sexual sexual violence um, occurs in, in this novel. So I feel like I should just give that, that warning um, before you go read it. But it is an absolutely brilliant novel, I think, and, and yeah, completely absorbing read. So yeah, I'd highly recommend this as well. Um, there's also Yoko Ogawa's The Memory Police, which is, I think, probably the most well-known novel on this, this short list and is it's such a, a beautiful novel and interestingly this book was written I think many years ago but was only just translated and published in the UK um, within the past year which is why it's eligible but is such an interesting look at a sort of dystopian uh, kind of landscape um, but is much more thoughtful and intellectual and philosophical in the way it looks at memory and relationships and our um, place in society and and uh, and yeah sort of family relations and i know that some people had some slight issues with the the plot of of the novel and how it works but the yeah the extremely thoughtful way that it handles the the subject matter i thought was so absorbing and um so the protagonist is a writer who is caught in this kind of dystopic society where uh objects keep disappearing um, from the, the landscape 
uh, around them and everyone is made to forget what these objects were um, except for a few people who can remember and who have to go into hiding because people who remember are tracked down by the police and then disappear and um, and so the, the the plot of the novel is this this writer takes into hiding her publisher who um, who uh, who can remember things and so yeah it follows that that storyline which is quite gripping but then yeah on top of that in really beautiful language explores the the human condition in this really moving way so yes again i'd highly recommend this novel as well which has such an extraordinary cover the uk edition i think is so beautiful uh, and then finally there's discomfort of of evening which is a novel that i was had huge expectations for which i think is why i probably felt a bit disappointed by the story um which uh, is is really interesting about an adolescent girl whose brother dies um, quite early on in the novel and then is about the, the grief of her family as she lives on a dairy farm. And uh, and I just found the, the story became a bit too meandering for me and didn't seem to really be going anywhere in particular. Um, and, uh, and also has quite a love grim subject matter in the way it explores uh, sexual uh, relationships between uh, this this girl and her brother and sister um, as well as the, the girl's friend as well as the narrator's great difficulty of being constipated and uh, and yeah there was just a bit too much detail about that um, for for me to personally care for but uh, but yeah that's uh, sort of just my opinion but it, it does have really interesting language and imagery um, that that she uses to describe her her landscape and and also a way of of yeah looking at at grief and uh, and changing relations of a family and you know in these sort of grimmer subject matters you know i think it's it's interesting that these things should be explored in in fiction but yeah i think it's quite interesting though that the the author is of a of a certain age and you know and identifies as non-binary and and so i feel like if this novel were written by in a much older man, I think a lot of people would be much more critical of the subject matter. And again, that's not to say that um, the author shouldn't have written about these things, but I, I just think it's interesting, the sort of social reaction to, uh, to books and that how, uh, yeah, just some of the, the adolescent sexual experiences, I think, would be um, looked at in a much more critical way um, than if the, the author wasn't a debut novelist and and quite young themselves. So yeah, I, I, I don't know, I think that's an interesting issue to, to think about. So yeah, I'm glad I read this this novel, as I said recently, but uh, but yeah, I did have some issues with the way it was handled. And, and again, I just really didn't like the ending of it, the very ending, like in the last few pages of how it concluded. Um, no spoilers, but yeah, I um, yeah, had real issues with that. So those are the six books. Um, let me know if you have any thoughts or feelings about them. If you've read any of these books, it'd be great to discuss them in the comments below or if there are ones that you're especially interested in reading now, uh, let me know. And uh, yeah, I should also say I'm very surprised not to see The Eighth Life on this list. I think it must have been very close to making the short list because I'm currently reading it now. It's such an absorbing family epic. I've, I've talked about it so much, but, um, but yeah, if you're looking for a really long, absorbing novel about Eastern European history over the past century um, through a great family saga, I'd really highly recommend this as well. Um, so, so yeah, uh, let me know your, your thoughts about the list and we can have a discussion about it. And I will chat to you again soon. Bye everyone.